Welcome to those of you watching on YouTube. This is Blowing Smoke with Twisted Rico. I'm your host, Steve Ricardo. If you want to hear this entire show with intros, outros, and music, please go to Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, etc. Please welcome to the show, Tom Baker. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Uh, it's a real pleasure to have you on the show because I am truly a fan of your songwriting and your recordings. I have been since the late 90s. Oh, I nice. even saw Nana like one time, like, I don't yeah. know, must have been like 98 or something like that. Yeah, probably about right. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you grow up in the Boston area? Yeah, I actually grew up uh, in Topsfield. So uh, North Shore were the Topsfield Fairs, so... And then, uh, then my parents moved to Dover, Mass. So I went to Dover, Sherburn High. Uh, and then I went to college in Boston. I went to Boston College and pretty much never left. So. BC, huh? Wow. Yeah. yeah uh, Topsfield, that's like up near like almost like uh, Newburyport area. Yeah, it's like Topsfield, Boxford, Middleton. Those were the three towns that comprised our, uh, our junior high and high school. So, yeah, North Shore. It's nice North up shore, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Near near where Kenny Chambers grew up. Oh, you know Kenny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Kenny, man. Great. I, I get. I think he's in Europe right now or something. He's on I tour. Did, I did see that. Yeah, so I was going to, to Europe for a little bit for a uh, Moving Targets tour, which is cool. Did you know him when you guys were younger? Yeah. I mean, just, you know, peripherally, we went to the same kind of shows. And, uh, you know, I, I really liked Moving Targets. I saw them a ton, so... But you didn't go to school together or anything no, like that? No, 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 no. But uh, just knew him as, you know, a fan and, and a fellow musician, so. Um, what, what, when you were a teenager growing up up there, uh, did you get into music at an early age? So I, <clears throat> my parents always had, you know, Beatles and Stones records around the house and stuff like that. Um, and I always wanted to play guitar, but I never got around to getting a guitar uh some uh, uh the next door neighbor loaned me one and i never i all i could figure out was smoke on the water so that's <laughs> that's about all i got how old was that how old were you when that happened I, that was probably in like seventh grade then um and by the time i i got into high school then i actually took a couple lessons uh and bought my first guitar in uh ninth grade yeah. was it an acoustic no, it was actually uh, an Ibanez AR50 um, that I still have. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, uh, if I painted my parents' shed, they said they would buy me an electric guitar. So it took like almost Good the deal. whole summer to paint it. And then I got a guitar. So. Good deal. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you, you mentioned the Beatles and the Stones. When, when did you start hearing music that really caught your ear? Was it those bands or were there yeah. other bands too? Oh, it was definitely those bands, but it was it was all you know AM stereo. I don't know <clears throat> if you remember WCOZ. Yeah, I do. So, so that was just like a classic rock station, even though they didn't call it classic rock then, but it, it certainly was. And they would play, you know, Elton John and and Foreigner and and Foghat and the Beatles, Stones, stuff like that. So uh, I was I was a fan early on of of that radio station. Was there like a personal favorite bands that you had, or is it all of the above? No, uh, it's just kind of all of the above. I just, uh, I mean, I certainly like the Stones more than the Beatles. So, uh, and that that's kept up over the years, but um, just a healthy appreciation for all stuff. And certainly Aerosmith, because, you know, we grew up in Massachusetts. So I <clears throat> loved Aerosmith. Um, yeah, when you, but, when you say you like the Stones, I I can imagine the Mick Taylor era probably was one you liked. I like all versions of the Stones. You know, like the early Stones where they only do covers, like the Mick Taylor version. I love Some Girls, and there's even some stuff post Some Girls that that I think is pretty good. So nice. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned you got that guitar. How old were you when you got it? Uh, geez, I was probably. Whatever ninth grade is, is that like thirteen or fourteen, something 13, like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, what did you you took lessons? Was it from someone? So I took lessons from um from this guy. Just basically, he was great. He kind of came in and and said, "All right, here's the basics. Here's like a pentatonic scale." And then he said, "What songs do you want to learn?" 
So I'm um, like, I want to learn Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix. And he's like, well, that might be a little advanced. <laughs> <laughs> so so he taught me a bunch of like Chuck Berry stuff, which, you know, was just the foundation of rock and roll. And and then we went from there and, you know, did, I don't know, Rising Sun and, and stuff like that. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of blues kind of progressions to to work on, you know, soloing and stuff. But uh, that was good. I it, I took lessons for maybe two months, I think, and then I'm like, well, this this guy kind of showed me how to how to listen to songs, uh, you know, and then figure out what key they're in, and then try to play them. So I'm like, well, I can just do this on my own. So, and I did, just did you went, have oh. friends that you could jam with and stuff when you were in high school? Not initially, but <clears throat> after a couple of years, uh, we got together with some people and. Um, had a band in high school called the Rubberheads, and and we did uh, the Rubberheads. Rubberheads, yeah, we did songs like you know what I like about you, uh, Money Money by Billy Idol, uh, Dancing with Myself by Billy Idol, um, Rebel Rebel. Sounds like, like a new wave band. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of new wavey, and you know we did some Devo and. The lead singer was uh, he was he was really into Devo. His older brother kind of gave us uh, some you know new wave records, so it was it was cool. So at that time, you were just do, playing guitar, rhythm guitar with him. Yeah, yeah, or? just playing guitar. Didn't even try to sing. Um, but yeah, that that was in high school. That was fun. So you know, we just played like house parties and stuff. By the time we we're seniors, it, it was it was just a good kind of party band. The Rubberheads. The Rubberheads, yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that name yet. I, I know. Hopefully, credit, my friend man. Bill, who Bill Revers, who is the singer, hopefully he'll uh, afford this this podcast to him, and, and he got a shout out, which is great. So you guys did like house parties and things like that. Yeah, yeah, just house parties, and then did some rudimentary recording in my basement uh, off my my dad's tape deck. So you know, place a mic somewhere in the room, have the guitar amp. Uh, we had an organ in the basement that had a drum machine on it, really rudimentary. So click the drum machine that just starts a beat. And then I'd play guitar over it and he would sing and yeah, some really funny, funny stuff. You mentioned uh, BC. Did you actually move to Chestnut Hill or did you commute? I actually, uh, I moved to Cleveland Circle. So I, I did, I never lived on campus. I always lived um, off campus. Mm -hmm. So, uh, was, was in Cleveland Circle for a little bit and then three years on Com Ave and then just commuted from Com Ave into BC and <clears throat> which is great because I was halfway between BC and Alston so we kind of could go either direction you know was it was that an adjustment for you growing up like in a more uh suburban rural area oh I I, I loved it it was it was time for me to you know go and I, I never kind of looked back <laughs> what was your major I was a mathematics major. Really? Wow, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. So when you got down there and you're living in that area, did, were you playing at that time? So freshman year, no. And then, uh, you know, met some other people that were guitar players and eventually uh, formed a pickup band called uh, Dogs of Pavlov uh, with my buddy Tom Devaney. He went to Boston College. Oh, yeah. He's from Bulkhead. Yeah, so Devaney and I are, were pals, and we we formed a band called Dogs of Pavlov, and that's wow. when I started singing because neither one of us could sing, but I could sing better than he could, so I, I that's why I chose to be the lead singer, I guess. Wow, Tom, betw betwixt, right? Yeah, he's in betwixt. Yeah, and, yeah. Wow, he's good. He's good. Wow, yeah, that's... yeah. He, he's a great, great guitar player. Awesome songwriter. Great guitar player. Um, so, did you guys play out? We did, you know, we did like, like Alston ba basements. We, we might have done the cage underneath Molly's once, uh, but not really. Just kind of house parties and stuff. And th that was short lived. And then, uh, and I think then Devaney went on to form Bulkhead after that. Bulkhead. Yeah. yeah he was in a few other bands too. Yeah. 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 He was in a bunch of bands and, uh, <clears throat> So those guys had great success, you know, really, really good stuff. And what what did you do? So I then, um, I don't know if you know my friend Tom Scanlon at all. That name sounds familiar. Yeah. So he and I then started a band called Smoke Shop. 
uh, around senior year in college. What year are we looking at right now? So that would have been 87. Oh, okay. 87, yeah. Uh, and we formed that band. And, um, you know, as we all through senior year in college and then into <clears throat> working for, you know, Blanchard's and uh, crazy delivery jobs. Uh, you after- worked at Blanchard's too? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I know. We're going to talk about Minahan because you have a long history with him. Oh, but did yeah, you yeah, work yeah. with any of those guys? Because they all worked at there at one point. So I worked with Carl Plaster, who worked at Blanchard's. <laughs> the drum master. <laughs> yeah, drum master, Carl yeah, Plaster. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I played in Smoke Shop, and we played like The Rat, and, and uh, you know, the the um, when the channel had those like afternoon matinee shows, we played those kind of things. And, you know, we just tried to get as many gigs as we could in different little places. Uh, Johnny D is the one in Alston, not the one here in Somerville. Right. Uh, we played there. Um, Bun Ratties, we played that place. Oh, yeah. Good we, one. Yeah. For people out there listening that aren't in the Boston area, Blanchard's, by the way, is a liquor store or a package store, as as we call it in New England. And, and I mentioned the all, all the neighborhoods worked there at one time, and I think a mm-hmm. lot of other – Someone else that was on my show told me they worked there too. So there were a lot of music people that must have went through the doors there. Yeah, they were pretty forgiving if you had to take, you know, a couple of weeks off to go on tour. Because I remember people were doing that. And then you'd come back and you'd, you know, unload a truck of wine and, and you'd still have a job. So, so what came next after that? Uh, so after Smoke Shop uh disbanded then i think it was um this band pouch so um my friend jim bunny and i started uh this band pouch kind of a <clears throat> it's like a all country ish band um and uh we were on a label with um uh oh my god i'm drawing a blank now it was Pouch, P-O-U-C-H. P-O-U-C-H, yeah, Pouch. I got to look that one up. I didn't know about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were, we uh, released two singles on Rockville Records. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Uncle Tupelo was the other band that was on uh, Rockville. Oh, was Debbie Southwood Smith your... Yeah, your... she was involved, but uh, she didn't sign us. But uh, she was involved in, in the label, yeah. It's interesting because I used to run Giant Records, and when I left Giant, they changed the name to Rockville. It's the same label. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They're Dutch East India. Dutch East India, yeah, yeah. Who was it that signed you guys to that label? Uh, Jeff Packman. Do you know Jeff, Jeff Packman? Yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. I haven't heard that name in a while. Wow. Yeah, he's still in New York. He's still in New York. Um, but yeah, he signed us, and we did two 45s with those guys, um, so that was fun, and Got to do a bunch of shows with Uncle Tupelo early in the day. So I didn't know cool. that. That's yeah. fantastic. So, so that must have been because you've become like, you know, gone into the all country. Yeah. Not yeah, always, yeah. though. Not always, because some of your stuff is pretty straight rock. But so yeah. you played with Jeff, uh, with Uncle Tupelo. That must have been really cool. Did Where did you play? Like, did you go on a little tour or? Yeah, we did TTs. We did someplace in Maine. Um, we did Green Street Station with them, like an acoustic kind of thing that Billy Ray Wayne put on. Uh, I think that might have, and then one, one, someplace in New York. I can't even remember it. I can't remember the name of it, but it, I remember it was a long drive there, and and we didn't stay over in a long drive back. So, <laughs> so when Uncle Tupelo did the split, did you go in a Sun Volt direction or a Wilco direction or both? I kind of went both. Like I. <clears throat> They're they're interesting guys. So Jay from Sunvolt is a man of few words, great guitar player, great singer. But basically all he did was smoke Paul Malls and like not talk. And Jeff Tweedy, super talkative, great guy. I love the first couple Wilco records. Then I kind of fall off um, for those guys for me. But uh, very nice guy. And uh, Mike, the drummer, was he was the most outgoing guy of of uh, uncle two below and he and he's a great pool player he would he would always kick her butts playing pool 
I I went, you know, I like Sunvolt. <laughs> I mean, I like some of like you. I like some of the early Wilco. I love that movie that uh, Sam Jones made. I don't know if you ever saw it. Um, oh, it's fantastic! It's them recording and uh, the record that um, they got dropped from the label. Anodyne, for an, maybe. Uh, it, it it made it was a it ended. They ended up re-signing with another label at Warner Brothers, and the record blew up. It had heavy metal uh, drummer on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I. I but I there's know. a mo you should check out the movie. It's really okay. good. It's all about yeah, them yeah. in the studio. I love oh, that okay. film. Yeah. Um, I like uh, Jay's voice better for some reason. He's got that real whiskey voice. Oh, yeah. Now you mentioned the Paul Malls. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he still smokes Paul Malls, but he was then a lot. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, that's interesting. I didn't know about that band. So, what happened after Pouch? Uh, then after that, I formed a band called Nana. Um, and after, well, both my grandmothers were called Nana, which is kind of weird. So we had like Nana Baker on my father's side and Nana Higgins on my mother's side. <clears throat> so I I formed a band called Nana. Um. And we got to work with uh, Kevin Salem, um, who's who, who I was a fan of, uh, dump truck guy. He was yeah. a dump truck, and made uh, one one full length record out at Longview Farms in Western Mass. That was a great experience. Um, and then uh, we kind of did some demos and stuff. Uh, selfish propensities yeah so, yep, yeah that's the name of the record so kevin yeah. did most of that which was great um su super fun making that with him <clears throat> uh and then we got signed to roadrunner records because you kevin did on, yeah because kevin was on roadrunner and then literally a week after we got signed i got the paperwork and everything yep sure signed it they dropped all the pop bands. So so Kevin got dropped. We got dropped and some other band called like Girl Toucher or something because they just wanted to do metal bands. So well, we never put anything out on Roadrunner. Uh, they gave us a, a recording stipend. So we used that, you know, and made a, a 45, which is cool. But it's uh, weird yeah. how people's paths cross in weird ways because I worked at Roadrunner, too, but I was there in the 80s uh you know the neighborhoods uh we put two of their records out on or mergo roadrunner they yeah. were trying to do more than metal for years but it never worked out yeah. and some people should just stick with they're good at you know and I know. That's, uh, yeah so we were super excited you know we went down to new york and did a showcase for the label and they they, they signed us and then literally a week later <clears throat> or a week after i got the paperwork that we we were signed they said, "Yep, yeah, we're dropping it. All pop bands are are done." <laughs> Did you get your advance before? You got your advance though, right? Good. You got it. Yeah, we got it before, so it was, you know it was five hundred bucks, which is fine. We still made a forty five. Um, so so yeah, that that was fun. Um, Paul Janovitz was in that band for a while. Oh wow, really? Yeah, when he wasn't on tour with Coldwater Flat, uh, Paul and I were roommates at the time. Was and, he drumming in your your band? No, he's playing guitar. Wow. Playing guitar, yeah, uh, and singing backups. So yeah, that was fun having him in the band for a little bit. So on the selfish propensities, he's on. There, there's a picture of him on the back cover because he helped make the record. Wow, yeah, I didn't know that. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I do remember the Scrim Shanders, which is kind. Is was that right after Nana? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty much right after Nana, and um, and it kind of dovetails into dirty truckers a little bit so my friend john mcgee great singer songwriter you know lover of sunvolt and wilco and, and all things all country and he's got a killer voice and uh we went into dave minahan's studio willie mammoth and create and did a record uh with the scrim shanders a full length uh came out great <clears throat> but at, at that time i was i was kind of playing with some other friends and and form dirty truckers and i had to kind of quit scrim shanders to focus on dirty truckers but uh super proud of that record came out great i just all i did was play lead guitar on it and i think i sang one song but john's singing is is way better than mine yeah did you so this so that's when your relationship with many hands started around that time 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so I had started recording with Minahan Dirty Truckers stuff, which is just, you know, songs I had. And um, I don't even know if it had a name yet. We we're just, pull, I pulled together some <clears throat> some Nana players and uh, Jim Delios was the drummer. He was the drummer for yep. Voodoo Dolls. He, he drummed for us. Um, and my friend Roland Smith was on bass. He was in Nana. That's the first lineup was you, Jim, and... and um... Roland. Roland. That's the yeah. first Dirty Truckers first, lineup. First lineup, yeah. And so, yeah, so we were recording uh, with Minahan, and then I suggested to John McGee that, hey, Scrim Shaders should record with Minahan, too, because it's... Oh, crazy. I didn't realize. So you recorded Dirty Truckers before the Scrim Shan. I didn't know that. It was kind of at the... Yeah, it was kind of at the same time, a little crossover, but yeah, pretty much at, at the same time, so... um. So yeah, I mean Dave Minahan's awesome to work with. I was going to ask you about your relationship with him because as we go through your <laughs> your repertoire here, you've worked with David a lot. Yeah, yeah. I basically, you know, ever since I guess ninety eight or something, I've exclusively recorded with Dave, <laughs> uh, and it, it's been awesome. It's just there was a, one record though. I'm going to call you out on that because there is one record you did with Ed V. I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh, right, right. Uh, yeah, we did one with Ed. Um, I forget why we. I think he was just you know we we'd done a bunch with Dave and we're like oh let's try something else. Uh, and and that record ca came out great. There's like a lot of covers on it and stuff. Uh, Wash and Ready was the name of that one. Yeah, let me go yeah. back to Bush League Romance for a yeah, second yeah, sure. because that's the first record that you did. Yeah. with Dave and those guys. And um, you guys came out of the box pretty good because I remember right away hearing about you. I saw you, I saw during, I, I wasn't always living in Boston, but when I was around, I did see the band several times. Oh, cool. And then in between 2001 and 2006, there was there, was that a lull period, period for you or? I think so. We just didn't have the funds to, record so it just kind of yeah took some some space there and then you um, went to ed v and did washed and ready in 2006 right yeah yeah now so um a bit. yeah one thing that i <laughs> you're a great guitar player but you always seem to surround yourself with all these great guitar players i mean <laughs> That's and the it, trick, Steve. <laughs> it, is, it is a good trick, too. John trick. Brookhouse came into the picture around that time after that record, right? Yeah, yeah. And he was, uh, you know, su such a great player all around. Um, an aw awesome dude. His his new band, Worshipper, is amazing. Yeah. Love, love Stoner, Shoegazer, Metal. That's, there you go. Uh, but yeah, he, he was a fan of, you know, Telecasters and, and kind of, twangy rock and roll um so yeah he he came in for he probably played in the band for a decade i think you know 10 years probably um and yeah we did we did some great records with him and again working with minahan it was just just a blast every time we went in there so yeah uh, you went back to dave and dave also plays and sings and does other things on several of your records yeah i would say he's on he's absolutely on every record, every record. <laughs> even even places where he didn't tell me he's on there i know i know he snuck something in so and, and that started at Caper Town Sound in the Fenway, right? And then yes. you eventually followed w along with Woolly Mammoth. Right, right, yeah. We had had a recording uh, practice space in that same building that, that Dave was at, Caper oh, Town. So 13, we were in the oh, basement. You were, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was in that building for a little while, too. Yeah, yeah, I remember you were in that building. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's when I probably first met you, because I, yeah. I saw you yeah. at the Linwood with Na Nana. I always right. say not na Nana, Nana. Nana. I say Nana, Nana. Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, we we had a rehearsal space in that uh, building. We were in room seven, which was underneath the bar. There was like a bar that was on that block. Yeah. And that bar used crushed ice to cool their beers, but their coolers leaked. So it leaked directly into our practice space. Alvin, Especially Alvin, come and fix the leak. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> During like Red Sox games where they just kept throwing ice into the coolers, it was just raining in there. So it, it was 
pretty funny environment. I couldn't stand being in that neighborhood during Red Sox games. Oh, brutal. Man. Brutal. Yeah. Drunk guys pissing on the back wall and fights yeah. and Jesus. Oh, yeah. But yeah, the yeah. building, though, the bands there and everything that went on in there and the studios and, and you know, when you, I remember, you know, for a while I was doing some booking at the Linwood for a couple of years and yeah. automatically at two in the morning, there was a party in Roadsaw's room or somebody's right, room. Right. Yeah, there, yeah, exactly. You know? exactly. <laughs> um, loose in the so. joints, tiger strips. And then, you know, uh, in 2018, you put out the best of the dirty truckers uh, that just it was so good having everything the best yeah, of that, the best on one record whose idea was that so <clears throat> we're on rumbar records i don't know if you can see this t-shirt i love lou yeah um that was lou's idea i'm like there really isn't any best of lou and so that's why <laughs> the best of is in quotes <laughs> so <laughs> that was lou's idea and it, it was great and i had um i've got a you know a bunch of kind of unreleased tracks to in the can that I can pull out now and then. And uh, I pulled one of them out called like him. Um, and we put it on Good the one. first track on the great, the best of, uh, and that one took off on, on uh, Sirius XM radio on little Stevens underground. So it, we lucked out with, that was a great, uh, good success for us. And so it was fun doing that one. The, uh, the best of, yeah, I really like that record a lot. Well, there's 22 songs on it, so it, it yeah, says yeah. a lot to pick from. Yeah, there's some um, covers on there. and the, yeah. You know what yeah. I didn't ask you, and I want to go back for a second sure. here. When did you actually start writing? Because you're a really good writer. Uh, I mean, I guess I started writing in that band Dogs of Pavlov in college. And certainly for Smoke Shop, I did some writing. But then, um, uh, you know... It just came on slowly. Like for a while, bands kind of all write together. Let's go in the practice space and we'll jam. We'll make a song. And then uh, after a while, I'm like, yeah, this jamming, making a song thing doesn't work for me. And so I just started writing kind of simple tunes that I liked. And then it and they just kept working at it. So I, I would say, you know, early 90s was I was doing a lot of writing what's your process do you do a you ever do acoustic guitar do you just do electric do you write the lyrics and the, the music for it what's your process so it's always um i i'll either do acoustic or electric uh but it's always music first lyrics second mm -hmm. but, but i always have an idea what the chorus is going to be even though i don't have all the words worked out so i kind of know what the uh i don't know what the meter is of the chorus so then i can i can visualize it and look at, kind of write the chorus first then the verses and then i'll go back and i'll i'll fill in all the the uh the words and the verses and stuff and so, you've got a lot of songs i know i know i got i i've got a lot i got a lot uh if uh, there's 22 in the greatest hits i've got you know probably four times as many as that total i imagine you have a few records in you still oh, probably so, more yeah. than a few yeah. Uh, okay, now here's where I'm intrigued. You know, I was living in Pittsburgh at this time, but yeah. Lou and I are good friends, so he would send me everything. And then the Dirty Snakes come out, and I'm like, wait a second, Dirty Truckers, Dirty Snakes. <laughs> and I look at the lineups, and they're similar, but you got John Blout on, on drums and John Sharon, and you got yeah. Charles Hansen. Like, you didn't have enough guitar players around. You I know, right, right. Well, uh, I, I, dirty truckers were kind of, you know, we go through emotions and there was a lull. So I started uh, Tom Baker and the snakes and Tom Baker and the snakes had uh, John Burkhouse on guitar, Charles Hansen on guitar and, uh, and John Blout on drums. Cause he's a great drummer. Um, and John Sheeran, uh, who I play with now in my current band um, on bass. So we did a full length record uh, came out on Rumbar, Tom Baker and the snakes. And then uh, I wanted to do like a solo record, but I kind of wanted both bands involved. So I, I took the snakes and the dirty and just made dirty snakes. And we did, you know, three songs, snakes and four songs, truckers or something like some mix like that. And Minahan was there holding the whole thing together. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was there laughing the whole <laughs> way. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, you know, there's a couple of songs, Cancel It and Out of Focus is probably one of my one of my favorite songs. Oh, great. Right? I yeah. just love those songs, man. I like a lot. Hotel uh, Highway View. I, like you. I yeah, mean, there's a, th th you got a lot of good songs, but that was really cool. When I heard that, I was like, wow. Yeah, that's that great. We still bands. do that one today. We still do Out of Focus. Uh, you know, we've got a residency at Flound Stars, second uh, Thursdays of the month, and Out of Focus is in regular rotation in that. So, oh, you're doing a residency right now, still? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yep. I'll ask you about that a little more in a minute, sure. but I want to go through some more of these yeah. records. Uh, Second Dose was kind of like a greatest hits kind of package as well, right? Again, that was a Lou creation. Um, like you pick the songs, and we'll we'll do it. <clears throat> so yeah, Second Dose was, is just another kind of songs that didn't make the the best of, you know. So what what was going on with you during the pandemic? Because that came out in 2020. Did that kind of sidetrack you for a while? I mean, how were you dealing with that? Because people dealt with it in different ways. How would you deal with it? Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of home recording. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I we have this other residency at Plant Stars um, the third Sunday of the month called The Mess Around. Yeah, very so popular. Myself, Jay Allen, and Justine Kovalt. So we did a lot of virtual mess arounds during during the pandemic, <clears throat> you know, because no one could play any shows. So we did some of those. But I did a lot of home recording and, and uh, writing. It was just kind of a, a downtime, you know? Yeah, I was... Yeah, it was people great. a different way. I drank myself into oblivion and had to quit drinking after the pandemic. But... <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I it was... Should've. It was tough. Uh, yeah, it the, was, it was. In 2022, released another great record, uh, the Tisbury Joneser. Yes. Uh, I wrote down some of the songs I liked on that because remember one, Cut Me Loose, great rocker. See, okay. you know, when when you, when you I think of you as an all-country guy and then I hear a song like that, I'm like, well, you know, he's a rock guy too, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, yeah, I like, you know. Was all down the line the one that you had Justine and Andrea singing on? Yes, yeah, that's a but good Pat song. Sang that Stone song, all down the line. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. And Minahan, once again, I saw. I can't remember was that record another one that he played bass on a song, and I don't think I've ever seen him listed playing bass on a song oh, yeah, before. Yeah, what was that? He did play bass on one because uh, our bassist Jamie couldn't make it in or something. <laughs> This is some kind of weird situation where, like, we got to get this thing done. And I think Dave, you know, it James was good. Said, Have Minahan do it. Yeah, it was great. He's and a, I listened he's, to the bass and I was like, oh, it's pretty good, man. Well, yeah, of course. No, he's, he's a great musician. He can he can play all sorts of stuff. Keyboards, drums, bass, guitar. He's, he's an everything guy. So, um, Okay, I'm I'm trying to get current now, and because yeah. uh, I just heard you're still standing there. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about, yeah. and I know you'd be a good guy to talk about this with. Is I'm a huge fan of both Steve Earle and Lucinda Williams. Okay, like yeah. uh, I feel I feel all right. Record, uh, yeah. you know, that's the Thank one you you're know. still standing there. Hardcore trap, true hardcore troubadour, and my favorite record, El Corazon. Oh yeah, uh, Tanny Town. It Great. doesn't, and then the song he did with the Super Suckers, NYC, and yeah. here I am. How how big of a fan of Steve's are you? I mean, huge fan ever since that record, uh, and seen him many times. Um, I, I, El Corazon, I think is just a great rock and roll record. Yeah. <clears throat> Before they make me run, uh, is. You know, he, I think he recorded that with the Super Suckers as well. That that Stone song, the Keith song. Um, but no, I think I, that record is is just great. So. I just was listening to some Steve Earle the other day because I know I was going to talk to you, and I forget how good Tanny Town is, and it's got a yeah. real solid message too in it. You know, yeah. and here I, I am. His, I love his production. Here I am is great. So in the Scrim Shanders, we used to do Here I Am a lot because the singer John McGee had a a uh, nice, rich baritone. So it was super fun to do that. Yeah, yeah. the timing works on that because you said 98 and that came out in 97. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And then Lucinda, you know, uh, Car Wheels on a Gravel Road. I mean, two Classic. songs on that record, Drunken Angel and Joy is one of my favorites. But 
when you take Steve Earle and Lucinda and put it all together, the Essence record to me is like the cream of the crop with Charlie Sexton. Did you oh, like yeah. that stuff too? I, I did. I did. Um, not as much as those individual records you just mentioned though, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, I, I kind of dig whatever Lucinda does. I've seen her live a bunch of times. She's, she's great. She's a wild card, but totally unique. Um, same with Steve, you know, Transcendental Blues by Steve yeah. Earl, who's great. Uh, <clears throat> had a chance to to uh, meet him. Lou hooked Justine and I up with a show at City Winery, where Steve Earl was playing acoustic, solo acoustic. And so wow. Lou, Lou got us tickets, uh, Justine and I, and got us to the meet and greet afterwards. So the show's great. You know, it's a tiny place in Boston, City Winery. Um, it's a chain that there's other ones in New York and stuff. So we go to the meet and greet afterwards and, uh, you know, shake Steve Earl's hand. Great. Awesome. You know, love the show. <clears throat> Can we get a picture with you, Steve? And he, and he's like, he's like, yeah. So I go on one side, Steve Earl, Justine's on the other. And he kind of pushes me out of the way. So there's just a picture of Steve and Justine. <laughs> Was he joking like, or? I, no, I think he's like, I'm going to take a picture with a pretty lady here. You go over there. Whoa, <laughs> it, oh. it was great. It was, it's super, super funny. So there's uh, a, uh, there's a promo um, picture of those, that exact picture going around that Lou has, he's been using for. Uh, I saw for, it. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's the funny backstory on the, on that meet and greet. You great. know, when I worked at a and records in Hollywood, um, one day we they we hired a new A and R person, and she I remember seeing the her car parked in the lot with the Tennessee plates, and it was Teresa Ensenat who signed Steve Earle to his first deal at MCA Guitar Town era, and they wow. were married too. Oh but, wow! But I'll never forget when I went and I I tried to talk to her about Steve Earle. Nope, <laughs> they did that did not end well. <laughs> that was before he went to jail. <laughs> well, yeah, he was probably in rough shape then. Be, yeah, jail for sure. Yeah. Um, Justine Kovalt, I know you guys were close, and you know, uh, it was a very sad loss for all of us. Oh yeah. And uh, you guys did this recording. When, when exactly did you record? Uh, you, like I was, I wrote a thing and, and Lou actually used it about how I was waiting for someone to re to do a cover of that song. Oh, yeah, how, did you, how did Super you, how did you decide to do the whole thing with Justine? So, uh, so Ed, um, Dave Manhattan's good friend, Ed Reamer has done a lot of work at Dave's different studios. Um, and Ed had, Reamer has like a little studio at his place in Canton. He did the Dogmatics the record. Barn, the, right? It's called the Barn or something. Barn, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, Justine and I, you know, we had a live, a duo thing where we played acoustic and did covers and in some of her songs, some of my songs. And uh, you're still standing there was in the mix just because we both liked it and I can play a little harmonica. So we we you know we said. Uh, and D D Minahan has always booked like three, three to four months out. Yeah. You know, we're never going to get in Minahan's. Let's just go. Let's try out Ed Reamer's studio. And we'll go in for a day. And we'll bang out. You know, you're still standing there. So we went in for one day. We recorded everything and uh, got a rough mix and then went away. And then Ed finished the mix, sent like two mixes to us. We're like, yeah, great. That was in 20... Uh, Jeez, am I doing 21 or 22? Something like that, 2021 maybe. Um, and then we just sat on it because Justine was going to release it on her label, Red on Red. But it just never, we talked about it a few times and like, well, if we're going to release it, like then what are we going to do with it? So so we just sat on it. Um, so her Justine's birthday was on May 5th. And I thought, you know, it would be appropriate and to honor her by releasing that. That's honor. beautiful. So yeah, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. So it was, you know, pretty heavy duty because um, you know her loss was just uh, sudden. You know, she unfortunately had a heart attack, and that was it. 
uh, just one day. So I thought this is a good tribute to her by releasing it on her birthday. And uh, it's it's gotten good reviews, which is cool. It's but a great love song. Kind of bittersweet, man. though, right, Steve? You can't. I can't really celebrate how good the review, reviews are because it's you know she's not here to <clears throat> to celebrate with me. So I'm still glad. You know, I'm not just me, but I'm sure everyone's happy you did release it, though, because it's yeah, really yeah. beautiful. Came out good. Came out good. So wow. <laughs> um. So what's next for you, Tom? So I've got another record. Uh, that I'm doing at Ed Reamer's that's it's in the mixing phase. So we're just finishing final mixes. Um, and is this a dirty truckers record? No, it's going to be a Tom Baker solo record. Who's um, playing with you on it? <clears throat> so most of my band that does the residency. So Jim Bunny's on guitar. John Sheeran is on bass. Um, Paul Delmonico Dell's on drums and David Lieb is on keys. Uh, and I think that's it. No. And Tad Overboss sings. Um, my good friend Tad sings backups on a couple songs. Uh, so that's this one's gonna be pretty it's a pretty personal, kind of moody, heavy record. It's not not gonna be a super rock record by any are you doing all the guitar on it? Uh yeah. Except for you know, my friend Jim, he plays lead on, on a lot. Um, but yeah, I mostly play guitar um most of the guitars but yeah it's it's just kind of a heavy duty release i just want to get some songs off the table you know is it more of towards the all countryside it's yeah it it's kind of there's a mix in there yeah there's some some acoustic only stuff like with a lot of jangly things and then there's some regular rock and roll you know mid-tempo stuff but yeah i guess it's it's still in the same vein as what i probably always do uh but but more acoustics this time that, that's for sure um, well I'm, i just, can't just wait moodier you know it's just kind of a moody record but uh, you got great great songs tom i'm sure done. <laughs> i'm sure it's gonna be <laughs> looking forward to it i'm curious so do you do do you listen to a lot of music i mean do you go out and see bands or do you do you have listen to records i mean what do you do as far as other stuff goes i mean i see a lot of friends bands um but you know aside from that i i i don't go see much music except for friends oh hang on a second i gotta get back here to this um and then I, I listen to a lot of, uh, you know, Sirius XM, whether it's the uh, Willie's Roadhouse or Lil Stevens Underground Garage. I bop between those two or Bakersfield Channel on Sirius XM is great. Um, and and then, yeah, I just listen to a lot of records here at home, like Stones and Kinks and we uh, Cheap trick, a lot of cheap trick because I love cheap tricks. So Ramones are right behind you on your yeah, Ramones, yeah, yeah, Ramones <laughs> behind me. Um, so, you you said you go see a lot of friends. Is there is there some bands or friends out there? And you don't, I know it's probably a long list, but is there people that you see and you're just in awe all the time when you see them? Yeah, I mean Tad Overbaugh and his band. It's the Tad Overbaugh and the Late Arrivals. That's a great band. That's a, a great band. Um. Any band that Dan Kopp goes in is an awesome band. He's, <laughs> he's in Peppermint Kicks. He's, I can't even list all his bands. There's too many of them. You played, with, you, play, you played with all the guys in Watts pretty much at different uh, yeah, times, yeah, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, their bass player was Craig, and we actually did an Elvis Cut Stello night, um, and Craig was on bass and I was singing. So I, I played with every person in Watts. Yes. Wow. What, what, I haven't heard much from John John Lynch lately. Is he like on a hiatus or something? Uh, yeah, he, he moved up to Haverhill. Um, and he's, you know, he hasn't been playing in any bands, but he, I know he's itching too because, you know, he and I text a lot. And uh, But yeah, he's just kind of laying low for a bit, I think, looking for the next good project. Yeah, because you guys have done a lot of stuff together. Yeah, yeah. He's waiting for Steppenwolf to go on tour so he can he can do that. You the know, John, he's drummer for Steppenwolf, right? Yeah, John was on my show a long time ago and he dropped okay. that one on me. And I was like, what? The yeah. Pushers like one of my all-time favorite songs. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> there's tons of pictures that he sent me of him and John Kay and you know on on the bus and stuff. All good, all good. Well, hey Tom, thanks for coming on the show, man. I, I you yeah. have a, a fantastic catalog, and I, anything new that comes out, I'm always excited to hear your new awesome. music. And I love your cover that you did, you know, with Justine. And thank you, man. Really, seriously, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I know we talked about doing it many a time, but I'm glad we we finally synced up on it. You know. Yeah, I think it's good now. I mean, it took me yeah. a while to work out the kinks, like about. 300 episodes later you know <laughs> <laughs> well I, I waited just long enough you know <laughs> all right man you take care and i'll I hopefully i'll we'll see you out there playing one of the i saw you at justine's uh tribute show but I, i'd yeah. like to come to see you again definitely yeah second thursday of the month it's called double down with baker um justine actually she named that series uh she said, I always keep doubling down on, on things uh, to make to make them harder for myself. I'm like, all right, that's the series. Double down with Baker. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we've done 40 shows there. Wow. Four zero. So Fantastic. Yeah, it's a good place. And please come down uh, if you get a chance. Thanks, Tom. All right. Thank you, Steve. <laughs>